The news at noon starts right now. And we start with late breaking news on the south side. San Antonio police have just arrested a suspect who the U.S. Marshals were looking for. Our Jesse DiGuglielo live in the 200 block of Hot Wells. Jesse, do we know why authorities were looking for the suspect? SAPD is now wrapping up at this house in the 300 block of Hot Wells, where officers had arrived earlier this morning to serve a narcotics warrant. However, the officers tell us at least one man who is in custody was also wanted by U.S. Marshals on a human smuggling warrant. Officers also have several people that they've been questioning. They say the house was searched and they even brought in a canine to assist in that search. Even code compliance was contacted about the conditions on the property. A neighbor told us off camera she's relieved to see that law enforcement was at the scene given what she says was a lot of coming and going at the house. Now we're still awaiting further details about what exactly was going on here and of course we'll have those online and of course later today on KSAT 12 News. We're live here on Hot Wells, Jesse De Guillado, KSAT 12 News. Thanks so much, Jesse. Meantime, Janine Jones, who's known as the killer nurse, pleaded guilty to new murder charges this morning. Jones was accused of killing an infant that she'd been caring for at a San Antonio hospital back in 1981. Paul Venema was in court for the plea and joins us live. So Paul, what are the details on this plea deal? Here's the details. The plea was for uh, to, to, uh, the charge of murder. The plea was guilty and the uh, sentence is life in prison. This all uh, brings to a close a tragic saga that began over three decades ago. Jones had already served a life sentence for the murder of a curfew infant in 1982 when she was indicted for the murder of five infants at San Antonio hospitals. She was scheduled to stand trial next month in one of those deaths. That trial ended with this morning's plea that called for a life sentence. But I truly believe that your ultimate judgment is in the next life. I'm going to sentence you to life, prison, in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division, affirmative finding a deadly weapon. Now, following that sentencing, the families of four victims were allowed to address Jones here in court. All were still angry, but all pleased with the sentence. We'll hear from them later in our newscast today and, of course, on the web at ksat.com. Now, back to the uh, plea itself. She pled guilty to only one case, the murder of Joshua Sawyer. As a part of the plea deal, the other four cases were dismissed. We're live at the Bear County Courthouse. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Paul, thank you. Also new at noon, we are waiting to learn more about the identity of a victim in a deadly crash on the west side. Police say one person was crossing the street in the 10,400 block of Culebra Road when a driver in a truck hit that person. Officers say that the driver did stop and call for help. The victim was taken to the hospital where they later died. Investigators believe that the driver did not see the person crossing the street. Eighteen days into 2020, and there have already been six deadly murders. Four of those have happened in just the past four days. Two occurred last night. Sarah Costa gives us a rundown on the homicides so far of 2020. Just received a call for a shooting in progress. Suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He had a gunshot wound to the left side of his head. Four days, four shootings, four people dead. Happening at the start of this week, two of those deadly shootings happening last night. That makes a total of six deadly shootings this year so far. Those homicides not necessarily happening in one location, but scattered across the city. From the far west side on Culebra to the far east side on North Foster Road. Early Monday morning, the San Antonio Police Department responded to a man shot dead in his truck at a construction site on the 5200 block of Eisenhower. Employees found one of their co-workers unresponsive in a vehicle. Tuesday morning, police responded to a murder-suicide at a far east side business on Foster Road. A man shot his brother, then turned the gun on himself. The victim in this case was a relative and they both worked at this location. He went inside and for some unknown reason shot the victim multiple times. Several witnesses called police Wednesday night after a man was shot in a west side McDonald's parking lot on Culebra. Upon arrival, they found one victim uh, suffering from a gunshot wound. That man later dying from his injuries early Thursday morning. Not even two hours later, police were called for a woman shot dead in the chest 
after she pulled into a driveway of a home on West Almost Drive. Police say it was this neighborhood near Thomas Edison High School where they found that car riddled with bullet holes. But police are still investigating and trying to figure out exactly where the shooting happened. Out of those four shootings this week, only one suspect, the man involved in the murder-suicide on Foster Road, is known. The other three shooters, police continue to search for them. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. We are getting a look at the woman who San Antonio police arrested for allegedly attacking her boyfriend with a machete. Police have charged Christina Nicole DeVern with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. She was taken into custody in the 200 block of Lakeshore Drive. Police were called to a home there just after 3 this morning. Officers say that DeVern was arguing with her boyfriend when she pulled out the machete. Police say that she cut her boyfriend's hand in the process. The victim had minor injuries and was treated at the scene. Horseback riders finding a burned body nearly two years ago. Now investigators still haven't caught, solved that case. So the Bear County Sheriff's Office and Crime Stoppers is asking for you to help. BCSO says that horseback riders found this burnt body on Southwest Bear County back in August of 2018. Investigators say it belonged to this woman, 51 year old Judy Andrena. If you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. After a long battle with cancer, Bear County District Judge Ray J. Olivari has passed away. Olivari presided over the 144th District Court. His family told us yesterday that he had been put in hospice care. Well, he later died. Olivari's Facebook posted a message saying that love and prayers during this time are deeply appreciated. A firefighter recovering from a minor injury after putting out a house fire here. Firefighters responded to the home. It was in flames in the 1500 block of Southwest 19th Street at around 915 last night. That's on the west side near Carver Hall Elementary School. Officials say that no one lived in the home, but arson is investigating the fire. One firefighter had minor burns to his hand. He was taken to Bamsey for treatment. January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month, and the San Antonio mayor is joining other city leaders to help put an end to the heinous crime. This morning, they held a press conference to highlight ways to identify and empower victims and also prevent human trafficking. Brittany Aranda with SAPD's Human Trafficking Department says that there are some red flags that people can keep an eye out for if you're concerned that someone you know may be a human trafficking victim. Well, there's, um, there's a numerous amount of things, but the first three things that come to mind is bruises, um, if they're unaware of their geographic, of their location, or if they're in a constant presence of an older controlling boyfriend, if they're not making eye contact, if you're attempting to speak to them and someone is constantly in that presence speaking for them, overpowering them, that would be a red flag and indicator. Um, if they don't have their passport, their IDs on them, if they have shared that someone is withholding those documents for them, those would be other red, red flags, indicators that you may want to dig in a little deeper. Um, and it just really comes down to following your gut. City officials say that human trafficking can affect any community, especially one as large as San Antonio. Students at a local Catholic high school game came together to connect during a special mass. Why school officials say building bridges between different Catholic schools is important. Hundreds of students got together to kick off the new year this morning and help strengthen Catholic education. A special mass was held to celebrate the Brain Power Path. It's University of Carnage Words initiative where Catholic schools come together to help Catholic education. Each school incorporates cooperative learning at lower grade levels, as well as access to accelerated programs from one level to the next. Catholic education in this day and time is um, kind of challenged with the schools and getting students into those schools. So we want to make sure that we are publicizing what we're doing and publicizing our Catholic education. Current members of the association include the University of the Incarnate Word, Incarnate Word High School, St. Anthony Catholic High School, St. Peter Prince of the Apostles School, Blessed Sacrament Catholic School, and St. Mary Magdalene School, as well as St. Anthony Catholic School. We want to take a look outside with live cam. It is uh, still a little drizzly out there, and uh, we're expecting perhaps more rain, Justin. 
showing up on radar. Uh, and uh, we're going to see more rain as we get into the afternoon. Uh, we're seeing the light cam there, some of those low clouds and some of the rain around. We're going to have more on your forecast coming up. Dream Week is well underway, and tonight the local nonprofit Esperanza Peace and Justice Center is inviting the community to take part in one of their Dream Week events. When you see us, it's an event where you can actually hear the voices and experiences of homeless LGBTQ youth in San Antonio. Alicia Barrera visited with some of the undocumented LGBTQ straight and youth of color participating who hope that their stories will help people recognize their bias. Scribbled on the front of the journal, Jasmine, don't read. Inside are some of Jasmine's most vulnerable moments. She's now chosen to share with those who listen at tonight's spoken word event, When You See Us. Part of it says, and when I hear people say, well, go get a job, I think to myself, well, how can I, when I put a fake address or I put an old address or I put an address to a shelter that I'm staying at and nobody calls me back. I get no emails. I get nothing. I don't even get a letter. Jasmine has been homeless for a year. I grew up thinking the homeless were just bums that, yeah, they could get jobs, but they don't want to. But then now that I am, I realized yeah, it's hard for us to get a job. She's been at Thrive Youth Center for the past two weeks. It's located on the Haven for Hope campus, and it's specifically for LGBTQ young adults ages 18 through 24. Here is where another youth, Josiah, has found a voice through the Spoken Word Project. It's a letter to the world. A raw letter of how he believes he has been perceived since he became homeless at age 18. I am a history lesson you can't forget, for I am a life full of lessons. When someone sees me, I feel like they think I'm a weak, brittle, unvalued, good for nothing, homeless, lifeless individual. Three years later, his situation is improving. Well, one thing's for sure, having a roof over my head is definitely a lot better. As is his perception of himself and the trials of life. In life, I have learned that bad things in life happen to you aren't meant to hurt you. They're only meant to make you a better you. Jasmine and Josiah, along with other youth from Thrive, will share their stories this evening at Esperanza Peace and Justice Center. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. That spoken word event, when you see us, is happening tonight. It's at 6 p.m. The address is 922 San Pedro Avenue. The event is free and open to the public. Snacks and drinks will be provided. Might be raining, though, so you might want to bring an umbrella. Yeah, have it with you today. The, the showers have been off and on. We're starting to see more development, though, to the south of okay. San Antonio. And that's encouraging. You know, this is needed rain. I mean, we've been in a drought for a while now, so this is great to see on the radar. Let's get right to it. And you can see most of the rain has been up there across the hill country so far today. That's where we've seen some of the bigger rainfall totals at least. But here around Bear County, we're starting to see some new development here. Just some scattered downpours. And part of that is because we are seeing a little bit of sunlight down to the south and east. So that's creating some instability. We've got a front moving south. Ingredients coming together here. And this is, again, just a great sight to see. As we look here at the uh, hill country, in northwest of San Antonio, you can almost pick out where that front is. We're getting development right along the front, which is right about there. But some of the heaviest of the rain has fallen across uh, Bandera County down towards Medina County and up around Kerrville. Here in San Antonio, I mentioned some of those new downpours starting to take shape here uh, along 1604 there on the south side and then on the uh, northeast side starting to see some rain there as well. And then back out over Seguin, a new little shower popping up for you. These are mostly just healthy downpours. We haven't seen a lot of lightning strikes or anything like that with this activity. As far as the measured rainfall goes, uh, this is newly updated up over two inches Pipe Creek down to northern Medina County. And a lot of that feeds into Medina Lake. Here in San Antonio, the numbers haven't been all that high, but I do think we'll start to see these numbers come up here across Bear County too. Uh, outside right now at the airport, cloudy skies, 71, a little bit of rain coming down. Dew point is at 67 and east southeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. We've been trying to pick out exactly where this front is located, and it's hard to do when you have this kind of cloud cover, but there is a huge temperature difference. 52 in Fredericksburg, 48 in Rock Springs, but it's 73 in Uvalde. So you know there is a front there, and I think it's moving into northern Bear County as we speak at 60 in Seguin. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. 71 at the airport, but I was looking at some of the temperature readings up there in Stone Oak. They're already in the 60s. So this front's going to slowly ease south today. It's going to make temperatures a little bit tricky, uh, but I do think that we'll see the numbers 
generally fall into the low 60s this afternoon. Now, if you're down to the south, we'll be looking at 70s, but north, 40s and 50s, so a huge spread of temperatures across the viewing area this afternoon. Future cash shows that front more or less stalls out, so we'll still have some rain chances through this evening into tomorrow. I think our rain chance is probably a little bit lower on Friday, but uh, we'll get another cold front coming in here. And by Friday afternoon, the, the best rain chance is going to be up here across uh, parts of the Everest Plateau and Hill Country. And then this front slides south. So by mid morning on Saturday, we're getting a broken line of showers, maybe a storm as this uh, next front slides south. And then by midday, it's probably south of San Antonio. And then by Saturday afternoon, we will get the chance to clear out a little bit. But these chances for rain are there through Saturday morning. And as far as rainfall goes, these are just estimates here, general idea, but up over an inch. We've already seen that off to the west, and then everybody else is probably probably looking at about a quarter of an inch. High temperatures today, or temperatures uh, right there, pretty steady in the low 60s, dropping off perhaps into the 50s by tomorrow morning. And then 68 tomorrow, 40% chance of rain. 64 Saturday, 30% chance, mainly in the morning. A little cooler on Sunday, 56, and cooler by next week, and we get more rain chances. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for the uh, March on Monday. It is going to be a little chilly and it could be potentially a little bit wet. Is that our two weeks of winter we've been waiting for? I think so. At least it feels a little more like January out there. Uh, it will next week for sure. All right. Thank you, Justin. Yep. All right, Larry, Spurs at heat last night. Close game. It was a close game. Miami is now 18 and one at home. They're darn near unbeatable and the Spurs just about got him once again. Demar had a great game. Plus, in college basketball, we have an SEC buzzer beater coming up. We getting there, man. We getting there. But um, next game is at home. Bounce back, starting there. Tomorrow, the Spurs finish their road trip two and two. Now they come home for two games in Big Board Sports. Miami is now an NBA best 18 and one at home this season after beating the Spurs last night. Second quarter, Lonnie Walker the fourth cruises in for his only points on the night. Later in the frame, on the break now, Demar will lay it in for two of his team high 30, and it's 51 all. He made 12 of 14 shots. Third quarter, watch this: Kendrick Nunn feeds Bam Adebayo over Lamarcus for a nasty slam dunk. Look again over LA's fingertips for a BAM slam. Alley oop, that's just tough to stop. Tied at 68 now. DeMar drives, passes to Patty. Mills for three. He scored 21. He made five three pointers, but Miami would hold on to win 106 100 behind Nunn's game best 33 points. We missed a lot, of, a lot of wide open shots. Patty got a couple shots that, you know, we, we live with any day. Brand got a, got a three. DeMarcus got a wide open three. Um, it was missing. They came back down and converted. You know, hit some big shots. Um, Dunn came through big for him. Hit some clutch shots. Um, and it just got away from us. The game was right there. We would have been able to score on two or three possessions, be able to get two or three stops. You know, we would have had a great chance to try to win that. Atlanta Hawks tomorrow night at 7.30. Houston has their pregame handshakes down, but on the court, they're struggling. James Harden, all fancy right here, but he only scored 13 points, well below his season average of 37. He went 3 of 12 from the field. Portland's Carmelo Anthony had it going on, shooting over the beard and good. He had 18. Every Portland starter reached double figure scoring. Portland wins 117 to 107. Head coach Mike D'Antoni said the Rockets are getting rocked right now. Mavs' Luka Doncic picked up his NBA leading 12th triple double last night. He had 25 points, 15 rebounds, and a career high 17 assists. He is playing MVP type basketball for sure. Mavs take it 127 123. They've now won three in a row. Men's college basketball number two, Baylor at home facing Iowa State. First half, bullet pass to Mark Vital for a massive dunk, and we're tied at four. Devontae Bondu with the ball now spins, shoots, misses, but Vital is there for a putback slam. He scored 11. Second half, Bears are pulling away. Jared Butler just cooks his defender, splits two guys, lays it in. Number two, Baylor gets the dub 68-55, improving to 14-1. and 
4-0 in the Big 12. We end with an SEC buzzer beater just after Kentucky goes up by two. South Carolina's Jermaine Cousinard drains a three-pointer at the buzzer to give South Carolina the upset win against number 10 Kentucky 81 to 78 as you look at that one more time. It's not even March Madness yet. All right, they're already getting it started though. That's right. All right, thanks Larry. You got it. New today at five, check your cable bills. If it has been a while since you first signed up, you might notice some new fees. And these days, streaming services and antennas make it easier to cut the cord. But if you're not ready for that, Congress has worked out a way to make your cable bill more clear. We'll explain today at five after entertainment tonight. Stay with us. The formal articles of impeachment against President Trump are now in the hands of the Senate, setting the stage for only the third trial to remove a president in American history. Later on today, the senators are going to be sworn in. The trial is expected to get underway next week. ABC Serena Marshall has the latest from Washington. The House Democratic managers who will make the case against President Trump returning to the Senate today to read the articles of impeachment. President Trump solicited the interference of a foreign government, Ukraine, in the 2020 United States presidential election. The president's legal team expected to be led by White House counsel Pat Cipollone and the president's personal lawyer, Jay Sekulow. As he maintains, he did nothing wrong. The whole process has been proven to this point to be a sham and illegitimate. But overseeing it all, Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts to be sworn in this afternoon and then administering the oath to the full Senate. During the trial, all 100 members will have to sit silently and weigh the evidence, just like jurors. Cell phones and electronic devices also banned from the chamber. Still unknown, however, whether new witnesses and evidence will be presented to the Senate. They don't want to see documents. They don't want to hear from my witnesses. Uh, they don't want to, they want to ignore anything new that comes up. Now, they want the Senate to redo their homework and rerun the investigation. Even as in the month standoff over witnesses, Lev Parnas, an indicted associate of Rudy Giuliani's, has alleged President Trump, Vice President Pence, and Attorney General William Barr were tied directly to the pressure campaign against Ukraine and turned over what his lawyer called a trove of data to investigators. Denials quickly issued by the White House, the VP, and the Attorney General. Just this morning, the Independent Nonpartisan Government Accountability Office, the government's watchdog, issued a statement saying that the OMB, our Office of Management and Budget, violated the law by withholding military aid to Ukraine, writing in a statement that they are not allowed to withhold aid for policy reasons. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. A former associate of the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who is under criminal indictment, is now directly tying President Trump, Vice President Pence, and Attorney General Barr to the pressure campaign against Ukraine. Lev Parnas, right-hand man to the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, told MSNBC that, quote, President Trump knew exactly what was going on, end quote. Parnas also claimed, without evidence, that Vice President Pence and Attorney General Barr were involved as well and that the investigation they wanted Ukraine to launch had nothing to do with rooting out corruption. So it was all about Joe Biden, Hunter Biden. It was never about uh, corruption. Seeking a cooperation deal from authorities as he faces charges related to campaign finance violations and an effort to remove the then U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Despite growing pressure, Iran is taking a def defiant stand on its nuclear program. In a speech, President Hassan Rouhani declared that Iran is now enriching more uranium than it did before it signed the 2015 nuclear deal. His remarks came despite a meeting between Iran's foreign minister and the European Union's foreign affairs chief. Europe has been pressuring Iran to continue complying with the nuclear deal despite America's withdrawal. The Senate will vote Thursday on President Trump's trade deal with Mexico and Canada. The leaders of the three countries signed the revised North American Free Trade Agreement back in November 2018. However, parts of the deal were changed after months of negotiations between the Trump administration and House Democrats. The agreement includes new provisions for digital commerce and implements more stringent rules of origin for auto parts. It also includes new minimum wage requirements for some auto workers. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said Wednesday night that lawmakers are set to approve the deal for President Trump's signature. 
The pilot for a Hawaiian tour helicopter company apparently did not send a distress call before crashing. The National Transportation Safety Board releasing a preliminary report Wednesday about that crash that killed all seven people on board December 26. According to the report, the pilot was on his eighth tour of the day and was flying in rain and fog with visibility of only 20 feet. The NTSB says helicopter, the helicopter plunged 100 feet and caught on fire after hitting a ridge in a remote area of Kauai Island. Here in San Antonio, it is 71 degrees and we are expecting some rain. As it looks like it's a little foggy out there already, Justin. Yeah, visibility is down a little bit. We've seen some of these showers working into San Antonio and really the entire area has seen at least a little bit of rain. It's uh, fantastic to see that on radar. The aquifer hasn't responded yet. It's down a tenth of a foot to 671.4, but I suspect it'll be on its way up tomorrow. In the pollen count, Mountain Cedar jumped up today. You think the rain would help us, but it did. 9,650 mold also jumped up into the high category. Uh, let's take a look at the radar and we'll show you that uh, the rain's pretty widespread at this point. We're starting to see more development uh, here around San Antonio. So some showers working through town. There's going to be some wet roads. If you're headed out for lunch, be aware that uh, you will see some downpours. You may want to grab an umbrella and it does look like that front we've been talking about is uh, starting to push south now uh, into San Antonio and move towards downtown. So some cooler temperatures are also working our way. A little closer look at the Doppler radar here. Some good, decent rain there along I-10 at 1604 on the north side. Seeing another little cell just to the west of downtown. And then more development down to the south along 1604 near Elmendorf. This is all working out to the north and west. No severe weather with this, but you will see some decent downpours. And as I mentioned, some of that cooler air now starting to work in. The temperature of the airport has just fallen to 66. We're seeing 50s to the north, so expect a cooler afternoon. Uh, temperatures likely staying in the low 60s. Decent chance of rain here. East northeasterly winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll have another radar update for you and talk uh, rain totals here in just a bit. Ursula. Thank you so much, Justin. As we age, we tend to have simple tasks like driving that becomes more and more difficult when your vision, hearing and reflexes aren't so sharp. It could be put, time to put your keys away for good. With more on that, here's Alicia Barrera. Americans are living longer, which means they are driving older. As we age, decreases in vision, hearing, reflexes, and mobility can potentially affect a person's ability to drive a car, even if they have been driving for decades. Certain medical conditions and medications can also affect one's ability to operate a vehicle, and driving at night may become especially difficult. But is there a particular age when people should stop driving? Dr. Tung, geriatrician at Mayo Clinic, explains that on average, people will spend six to 10 years of their life retired from driving. She encourages older adults to make the choice to retire from driving rather than risking a horrible car accident or obtaining fines from traffic violations. Patients can discuss their health and life goals with their doctor to determine when the right time is to retire from driving. Older adults can find out more information about driving rules from their local Department of Motor Vehicles. They can also seek resources in the community for transportation and use rideshare services. Retirement from driving is not about loss of independence. It's more about adapting and staying healthy. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. A popular young adult book is getting a live adaptation and it's coming to Disney Plus, a preview in the spotlight. New numbers reveal folks in some states got hit hard with robocalls last year. That includes Texas. Just how many billions of unwanted calls Texans received. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. The CDC and the FDA say that a nationwide E. coli outbreak linked to romaine lettuce is now over. The romaine lettuce in question was grown in Salinas, California, and infected a total of 167 people in 27 states. The FDA said that its investigation into the source of the outbreak is continuing. The agency says it plans to conduct another investigation to explain how contamination happened. Americans got hit hard last year with those annoying robocalls. I got a lot of them. You did too, probably. 
the, may, the company that provides a service to block robocalls reports nearly 59 billion robocalls last year. That's up 22% from 2018. Texas and California got the most robocalls, more than 6 billion. But there is some hope for all of us. President Trump recently signed a new anti-robocall bill into law. Officials can now fine companies $10,000 for each illegal, pl illegally placed call. Good, because those are annoying. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, it is now 65 degrees. It kind of dropped a little bit in the past couple of moments. But we're told more to come. Weather's next. The young adult novel Star Girl is coming to life on Disney Plus, and the company just released a trailer for the new film as well. Down. What's her name anyway? Star Girl. My name is Star Girl. So be true to your school. You should talk to her. She likes you. She doesn't. You like Star Girl. I don't really know her. But maybe if you did, you might. I like this. Star Girl is a film about a free-spirited new girl who catches the eye of a boy named Leo. It's based on the Jerry Spinelli's 2000 novel by the same name. Graham Vashir plays Leo and Grace Vanderwall makes her acting debut as the title character. Vanderwall won the 11th season of America's Got Talent. Star Girl is set to premiere on Disney Plus on March 13th. Through several adaptations on the page and on the screen, the story of a doctor who can talk to animals has been a fan favorite. Many times now, and it's back with a new leading man. CNN's David Daniel has a look. We have no choice but to embark on this perilous journey. Robert Downey Jr. launches a new adventure as Doolittle. You can talk to animals. Yes. Downey and his wife, Susan, who produced the film, were well aware of previous big screen takes on the classic tale. It's just her idea. Uh, <laughs> I think this one has a bigger kind of action adventure quotient and um, definitely something a whole family can enjoy. And there's just the right amount of silly and heart. I mean, Rex Harrison to me was a big deal. Yeah. Eddie Murphy is a legend and the cast if you just look at who is involved in this project, for us, we've been doing this a while, it was such a vote of confidence to see the caliber of folks that came and decided to join our little circus. Somehow, we just belong together. Doolittle's human actors do a lot of reacting to CG animals. Most of the time it was it was working to nothing, and I thought that was going to be quite easy because that's what acting's all about, imagining things that aren't really there. But um, you've got to think of the weight of the animal, the eyeline of the animal, so it was quite challenging. But now it's good to see nothing become something, which I think is really nice. Nobody told me there'd be a dragon! In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. There wasn't a dragon in the original. I don't just know. Second. I just remember Eddie Murphy being Dr. Doolittle. The second one. <laughs> right. And, but we're about to get a first go around with some more rain. Yes, welcome rain. We, we got the drought monitor in this morning, and you can see that most of South Texas is still in a drought. We go out west, and you've got extreme drought here. So where has the rain been falling this morning? Let's put the radar over the top of this, and you can see the showers falling just in the right areas. And in fact, we're starting to see it become more widespread this afternoon, and that is encouraging too. We need the rain across all of South Texas, but starting to see some of that drought pick up there across our eastern counties as well. So the, the news is good here, and uh, the downpours have been filling in across Bear County. Let's go outside for you right now. We've got uh, clouds 65 degrees at the airport. Temperature dropping there. It is a little bit warmer, Port SA at Stinson, and at Stinson. We're watching a cold front work its way south. And so we're going to see a pretty big difference in temperatures between northern parts of our viewing area and southern parts of our viewing area as this front slowly moves. Doppler radar shows where all the rain is right now, and you can almost pick up on where that front is. It's right about there. We're seeing some development right along the front. And a little closer look at the hill country, which has been seeing some of that decent rain. Starting to let up a little bit, but there's still some showers and downpours around Bandera. Uh, north of Sabadell, and it's this area right here that has seen the most rain so far today. A little closer look here at Bear County. Showers redeveloping, some good downpours. These are pretty quick moving, but they're going to put down some decent rain if they move over top of you. Converse, 
You're seeing the rain right now north of Lavernia around Seguin, seeing a little bit of rain and also at Elmendorf south side of town there. The rain is starting to come down. We mentioned the temperatures. It's tricky with this front, but we've got 54 burning stage 54 comfort. There's the cool stuff. That front has just moved through the airport and is working its way towards downtown. It should work through most of Bear County and that will allow those temperatures to drop. The forecast temperatures 60s here across the middle part of the viewing area, but you get 50s and 40s up north and then 70s down to the south. So here's what our future cast looks like. Uh, that front uh, progresses a little bit further south. We'll see scattered showers uh, today. Tomorrow, still a chance. I don't know if it'll be as widespread, but I think by tomorrow evening, we'll start to see a cluster of showers and maybe some storms develop right along a front. And the, the best chance tomorrow is going to be up across the hill country in Edwards Plateau. And then this front will uh, move farther south on Saturday. And by mid morning on Saturday, we'll see a broken line of showers and storms. And that's probably pushing south of San Antonio by midday. We'll get some clearing by Saturday afternoon. As far as rainfall goes, we've already seen some pretty big totals, but an inch plus out to the west of San Antonio and uh, maybe getting close here in town. Quarter of an inch as you get across our eastern counties and down to the south and east. Temperatures today, a little 60s, I think. We're cooling down some 60% chance of showers. will fall into the 50s tonight, 57 to start tomorrow, 68 on your Friday, 40% chance of rain. And a chance Saturday morning, too, at that next front. 56 on Sunday, and more chances of rain next week. What a change. It has been a change, a, a more active pattern, and I think that's uh, probably what we needed around here. And it's still kind of weird. Saturday and Sunday, still, the sun's going to come yeah, out. It's it been works, our trend. It works out well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Larry, DeMar DeRozan on fire. He is. He's carrying the Spurs right now. 12 games. His last 12 games, he's just been absolutely incredible. And last night, he joined Michael Jordan on a very cool list. And in college football, Frank Wilson has a new job coming up. Spurs shooting guard DeMar DeRozan is red hot on the court. The current Western Conference Player of the Week had his way with Miami last night. He led the Spurs with 30 points in 35 minutes. He made 12 of 14 field goals and went 6 for 7 from the free throw line. The rest of the Spurs starters combined for 31 in the Spurs 106 to 100 loss. DeMar joined Michael Jordan as the only player in league history to have 12 straight games of 21 plus points, shooting over 52% with three or more assists. I mean, just it's an honor, just your name, just being in something like that. You know, it's a fairy tale dream. You know, whatever, whatever category you in with, with, with any of the greats, definitely an honor. Pelicans rookie Zion Williamson is nearing his regular season debut, and it could come against the Spurs January 22nd. The number one overall pick in the 2019 NBA draft has missed the entire season while recovering from October knee surgery. David Griffin, the Pelicans executive vice president of basketball operations, updated the media yesterday morning. Based on today's practice, which was not terribly intense because we're still somewhat of the walking wounded, um, we're going to continue to try to get him some reps in practice. Uh, we hope to have a slightly more intense practice on either the 17th or 19th. Um, if all goes well from that, and assuming he is cleared by then, which he is not quite yet, um, our anticipation is he'll play his first game on the 22nd at home against San Antonio. Zion played in only one summer league game and two preseason games before he tore his meniscus. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Pro Football Hall of Fame released its class of 2020. And two names are left off, former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Drew Pearson and San Antonio's own Tommy Nobis. Pearson, who played for the Cowboys from 1973 to 83, was named to the Pro Bowl three times and made the All-Pro three times as well, winning a Super Bowl in 1978 and is known as the original 88. And what made it even worse? He held a Hall of Fame watch party at his house with family and friends, even applauding for his former teammate Cliff Harris, who did get the call, but Drew did not. God, did you get it? There's nothing negative about my career in the NFL. Nothing. How could you say negative things about it? You can't do nothing about it. Can't catch no more damn passes. Can't run no more routes. It's there. They broke my heart. They broke my heart. And they did it like this. 
And in better news, former UTSA head football coach Frank Wilson has a new job, hired as the next head football coach at McNeese State. They tweeted out the good news this morning. 46-year-old Wilson is a New Orleans native who has coached at LSU, where he served as associate head coach for the Tigers at Ole Miss, Southern Miss, and Tennessee. Congrats to him, like Frank. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Thanks a lot. We need to head over to SA Live now. A lot going on oh, over yes. there. Looks and like what are y'all up to? We're starting off with a brunch hot spot. In fact, yeah. Mary Lou Davis from Whiskey Cake is here, and this is just one of the yummy items on the menu. What is he cutting into right now? All right, this is our Monte Cristo French toast. It is going to have our local Duroc ham. It's going to be our house-made mac and cheese base with a little bit of cream cheese in there. Cheese. Some fresh berries and then some um, some fresh syrup. Okay. You guys going ahead, have a great time. It's a really big seller on our menu. I'm going to take a bite. Okay, Start we've got some more brunch items. What's better with brunch than a mimosa? However, you got to earn this one. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you how. We have some other fantastic cocktails and mocktails. I need to wash there. it down. Okay, you wash it down there. <laughs> and also some uh, craft beer items coming up. Now, in a couple of weeks, of course, is the big game. We've got the playoffs this weekend. Big right. game coming up. We're going to show you how to decorate. Dina Anderson is here. Some great little uh, finger foods and snacks, cocktails yes. as well. And how, and to, how to do that, this. That party on a budget. Right. That's the best part. Looking for something to do this weekend? Hmm. Yes. Monster Jam. Monster Jam. Rolling oh, into wait. the Alamo Dome. These are not to scale. <laughs> <laughs> now we are going to attempt. To a feat never seen yes. before on uh -huh. television. We are going to attempt Whoa. to launch a mini monster truck over Mike Osterhage. That's what happens when I miss mm -hmm. the meeting in uh -huh. the morning. What could possibly go wrong? You'll find out when we do. All that and more when SA Live revs into gear in just a few minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh, the wheels are off.